Okay, we're going to do a very simple projectile motion problem right now, and we're going to be dealing with a horizontal launch. And this is an object, and let's say that it's rolling off the cliff here, and it has an initial uh, speed of 10 meters per second, and it's rolling off the cliff. And let's say that it's uh, 20 meters high, and we want to find a lot of information out about this object. Okay, so let's say that I want to find the uh, delta x that it travels, the distance that it travels before it hits the ground, the time it takes to hit the ground, and the final speed when it hits the ground. And all we know is that the initial speed is 10 meters per second rolling off the cliff, and the delta y is going to be negative 20 meters. It's going to drop 20 meters here. It's going to strike the ground right here. And it's going to have some velocity when it hits the ground right at this point. One of the things I want to point out that's very important about projectile motion is this. Um, people confuse a lot of the times. They say, well, what happens uh, right when it, when it hits the ground? Isn't the velocity zero? And the thing you need to remember about kinematics is that all of these problems deal with air time, air time only. So right when it's in the air, here's where we're talking about, right after it rolls off, and right before it hits the ground. So they have speeds at all points into here. Obviously, after it hits the ground, the speed is zero if it doesn't bounce, okay? And that's dealing with something completely different. That's dealing with impulse and momentum, okay? So impulse and momentum are dealing with ground time or contact time. Kinematics and projectile motion is dealing with air time, okay? So that's important. So we wanna find this, what is this final speed V here? or this final velocity, let's say, once it hits the ground. Okay, so the first thing you do with a projectile motion uh, problem is I like to draw an X and a Y table here, okay? And we always start out with the acceleration in the X. We know that it's always zero meters per second. And the acceleration in the Y is always going to be negative 9.8, okay? That's important. The next thing we're gonna look at is the initial X, okay? We know in this problem, once it rolls off the cliff, all of the speed or the velocity at this point is all in the x direction. So that v initial x is simply 10. Okay, and we'll look at v initial y. We talked about this before in the different situations. That is gonna be zero. There's no initial y velocity. It's zero at that point, zero meters per second. Okay, so that's zero. Let's look at v final x here. Look at V final Y here. We don't know what V final Y is going to be. We're going to have to find it. V final X here is 10. Okay, the initial and the final are the same. Let's look at delta X. We don't know that. Let's look at time. Let's look over here at delta Y, which we do know, and that is negative 20. And let's look at the time here. Now, interestingly enough, the x and the y behave independently of each other. The x doesn't care what the y is doing, the y doesn't care what the x is doing, okay? Air time is always dependent upon what the y is doing, okay? It's dependent upon the y component. That's what's gonna depend on, determine how long it's in the air and what it's doing. The x component is going to be involved when we wanna know the range, how far does the x go? And the, and the combination between these two will determine the optimal range, okay? So that's a different story. And remember the range is this. This is the delta x here. Okay, so there's our range. We want That's one of the things we wanna find. And when, we, when you're doing a projectile problem, you can just pretty much find everything. I mean, you, you need three variables, okay? You always need three variables to solve a kinematics equation, okay? You need three variables. So what do we have here? We always know that this part is true in kinematics, no matter what, in kinematics projectiles, these two things are always true, okay? X acceleration is zero, Y acceleration is negative 9.8. So we need three variables in the Y. We already have one right away, there you go. You know that this in this situation, the Y initial uh, velocity is zero. There you go, you got two. And we said that it travels a displacement of negative 20 there. I'm going to go ahead and just draw my axis. I'm going to assume that positive to, is to the right, x is to the right, and positive y is up. So now we're all set to do this problem. So let's take a look at this. 
what equation would we want to start with here? We have three variables. What equation would we want to start with? The equation here with delta y equals v0 t, v0 y t, okay, plus one half a t squared. And that's going to be a real easy equation to work with. We're not going to have a quadratic because the initial y velocity is zero. Now, once you solve that, you're going to add t is plus or minus 2.02 seconds. Let me explain to you what this means in terms of time because we can't have negative time. But what this means is that you have a symmetrical problem and that if you could go back in time 2.02 seconds, um, you would have also been at the floor. But we're going forwards in time, so we're going to take the positive 2.02 here. And we're just going to plug that in, no problem. And so what is my what is my delta x? What is my v final y? Well, we have a choice here with equations. Once we have four variables, you should always choose the simplest equation. I'm going to list the equations out here uh, that we can choose from. So over here, I've written our basic kinematic equations in the y direction. This is with a constant acceleration. I'm just going to fill these in just to show that we mean y. OK, in the first equation here, delta y is v0 plus v over 2 times time. And that's the displacement. And these two equations here, and the second one, which is uh, v, and v final y equals v initial y plus at, these two equations are the simplest equations. And you should always try to use these two whenever you can. Sometimes you can't, though. Sometimes you have to use uh, our equation down here, number 3, which is delta y equals v0 t, that's v0 y t, plus 1 half at squared. Or equation four, which is v y v final y squared equals v initial y squared plus two a delta y. Sometimes you have to use these two, and and this one can give you issues because you can get a quadratic, and this one can give you issues because you have to choose when you take the square root, you have to choose a plus or minus value, and depending on if your projectile is going up, you choose the positive. If it's going down, you choose the negative. So these can both give you issues, um, but in this case, we already used uh, this equation. We used equation number three. And it was a simplified case. There was no quadratic. We got 2.02 seconds. So going back over here, we have four variables. So what does that mean? That means that I can use pretty much the easiest equations here. I can use, um, I can use equation 1 or equation 2. And in this case, I'm trying to find v final y. So that's the next variable I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and use equation 2. Why not? That's a simple equation. So v final y, which is what we're looking for, equals v initial y, which is 0, because it's rolling flat. Remember that initial velocity in the y? It was just going flat, OK? It had no initial y velocity, plus negative 9.8 times 2.02. .02. OK, so now let's solve for our final y velocity. Okay, so our final y velocity is going to be negative 19.8. So notice we're just kind of going through this chart kind of in a pedestrian manner, just kind of finding all the variables, filling them out. Nothing that exciting, really. Uh, and this is a pretty straightforward problem. Now, the only thing we're missing now is the delta x. And the good news is that in the x direction, by the way, this was the y direction, y axis. In the, in the x direction, the good news is there's only one equation. That's it. And that equation is simply this. We know that, I'm just going to put here, the speed in the x is always constant. As long as it's in the air, it never changes. Now, we're not talking about wind resistance here. I mean, this is in a vacuum. Obviously, there's wind resistance, right? You know when you throw a ball, it can slow down. But in our situation here, there's a vacuum. And so if I want to find delta x, all that I do is I just say vt, OK? Delta x is vt, OK? So we know that my initial x velocity is the same as the final x velocity up here on the chart. And that was simply 10 meters per second. And my time was 2.02. .02. So my delta x is simply 20. 0.2 meters. So my delta x is 20.2 meters. Okay, so we found a lot of information now. We found everything.
found everything in the x, everything in the y. And we found what we were looking for, the delta x and the time. But the final thing I asked you to find here was the final velocity. And when I ask you to find the final velocity, what that means is that you have to find the magnitude angle in the reference. And so to do that, we need the final x and the final y. So let's remember what this looks like here. As this, right before this hits the ground, it has an x component, it has a y component, and we're trying to find out the magnitude. We're trying to find out this v, and we're going to try to find out this angle, okay? But we know now the final x, and we know now the final y. Okay, we know that. We found it up here. So all we have to do is to draw this out and find out what that angle is and what the final magnitude is. Okay. And so this V was simply the magnitude of the whole thing, this vector. And I want to find out um, what that final magnitude is. So I'm just going to write this in here. If we say V of X, V final X, we know that that's still just 10. And we know V final Y, in this case, is simply the negative 19.8, just that component, right? And I want to find theta. So how do we go about doing that? Well, let's just write in this space here. I'm going to write in the space here just so you can see very clearly what we're doing. So I want to find that magnitude. So the magnitude is simply the square root of 10 squared plus negative 19.8 squared. So that final speed is 22.2 meters per second. That's the magnitude now. That's the magnitude of this here. And we want to find that angle. So we're going to say theta equals inverse tangent of the y over the x. In this case, it's vy over vx. So we're going to say 19.8 over 10. Notice that I'm not putting in the negative here because we know the reference angle. We're going we're gonna to reference it in a minute. So we will say theta equals, that's going to equal 63.2 degrees. And now, Again, when we find the vector, we always want to find the magnitude and the angle in the reference. So what is that reference? Well, here's our positive x-axis, right? So we know that's going to be below the positive x-axis, okay? So we will say that the final velocity equals 22, oops, let's make it 2 there, 22.2 .2 meters per second. You can say at if you want. 63.2 degrees, and you can say below the positive x axis. And so now we've solved for everything we were asked for. Uh, we've solved for delta x time and the final velocity. And j again, projectile motion is really not that bad. Uh, you just need to identify your situation. Here we had a horizontal launch. And then we need to always make our component table. We're going to look for our three variables here. Okay, usually th the problem has to start out by giving you three variables. There's some situations where they don't, like when you have the range equation, but most of the time you're going to find your three variables. And just remember what you have over here. Uh, you have your y-axis kinematics equations here. You have your four basic kinematics. And in the x, there's just the one equation. And so after that, it's just a matter of kind of going through the table and finding out your your knowns, uh, you know your your unknowns one at a time, and then once you have four variables here, remember you can always just go to these first two equations to solve what you're looking for uh, most of the time, and it makes life a lot easier.